Hello, my name is Duyang Kim, and in this video, I will talk about how to efficiently compute the comparison operation in homomorphic encryption. And this is the joint work with Professor Zhang Yichan and Dr. Dong Kim. Okay, uh, so let me start with some brief introduction of homomorphic encryption and the motivation of our work. In this work, we propose complexity optimal homomorphic comparison methods for worldwide homomorphic encryption schemes. This is the follow up study of our previous work presented at the last year Asia Crypt. In the previous work, we only achieved quasi optimal solution for homomorphic comparison and it was even quite impractical. But in this work, we overcome these kinds of weaknesses. Firstly, uh, we finally achieved the optimal complexity which means the number of homomorphic um, multiplications. And now it shows quite nice performance in practice that it is now comparable to bitwise homomorphic comparison, which has been the most natural and efficient way. Uh, of course, in amortized running time sense. And also in mathematical perspective, our work can be also viewed as a new framework called composite polynomial approximation for a sine function and it has a potential to be applied to more general functions. So the homomorphic encryption is a crypto system which allows computation on encrypted data without any decryption process. So theoretically, when we encrypt the data with homomorphic encryption, then we can do any computation and any analysis in real world, even without knowing the data itself which ensures the data privacy. So for example, one of the most recognized ap application of homomorphic encryption is machine learning. At a high level, the machine learning is to generate a model from the training data and use the model for the inference or prediction phase. But without any pri privacy preserving method, an attacker can invade in any procedure of the machine learning and take the data which can be very sensitive and private, such as genome, health, or finance data. But, however, when we encrypt the training data with homomorphic encryption, since we can do any computation in encrypted state, we can still learn the model and go on the prediction phase, but the attacker would not be able to learn any partial information of the data because the data is encrypted. So, in this perspective, one may think homomorphic encryption is a perfect solution for the privacy concern in real-world applications and might say, oh, let's encrypt everything with homomorphic encryption, then we are done. Mm, we hope so, but there always exists a gap between the theory and practice. We may think of various limitations of current homomorphic encryption based on different perspectives, but one of the most troublesome points is the computational inefficiency due to the restricted basic operations. Mm, there are two big encryption approaches in homomorphic encryption. One is worldwide approach and the other is bitwise approach. The worldwide approach is to encrypt the message by itself, but in Bitwise approach, the message is decomposed and then each bit is encrypted separately. So in worldwide approach, uh, it basically supports addition and multiplication, so it is good at polynomial evaluation. But they are not good at um, logical operations, including comparison. On the other hand, the bitwise approach basically supports logical operations but they are not good at polynomial evaluation because they have to uh, express the polynomials as a, a set of logical operations. So in this talk, uh, we'll focus on making up for the weakness of worldwide approach with the goal that the worldwide approach is still efficient even when both polynomial evaluations and logical operations are required which usually happen in real-world uh, computations. Okay, now let's imagine that we ha only have two tools, addition and multiplication, which means uh, the polynomial evaluation. Then 
how can we evaluate non-polynomial functions, including comparison? Since only we can do is polynomial evaluation, uh, it is quite natural to think of polynomial approximation on the non-polynomial functions. In terms of polynomial approximation, actually we already know a number of general methods from the literature of numerical analysis, such as Taylor approximation, least square approximation, minimax approximation, and trebuchet approximation, and so on. So one may think that it would be enough to apply these well-known methods. Um, so theoretically, yes, but these methods do not satisfy us in efficiency and practicality. So in detail, what are the exact limitations of these general polynomial approximation methods? These methods commonly aim to find the relation between the degree and the error bound. In other words, they output the minimal degree polynomials within a certain error bound under some predetermined error measure. However, the number of multiplications, which we call complexity in this talk, is also a very important factor and it is actually more critical in uh, homomorphic encryption since there is a large computational overhead in homomorphic encryption compared to the plain state computation. So from this perspective, we came to the following natural question. Can we find a new polynomial approximation methods for the sine function with minimal complexity rather than the degree? And this was the starting point of our work. Now, let me talk about the high level idea of our work. Actually, we shared the same high level idea up to our previous work to use some structured polynomial for the polynomial approximation. So what it means is, um, okay, when we want to compute an unstructured polynomial, which means um, we do not know any information other than its degree, then it requires at least square root degree multiplications. And this lower bound derives an exponential computational complexity with respect to the output precision bits. However, when we use a structured polynomial, for example, the po composite polynomial, then we may expect uh, it requires only log degree multiplications. That means um, if we can approximate a non-polynomial function through the structured polynomial instead of some unstructured polynomial, then even if the degree gets somewhat larger, we may expect much smaller complexity. The main difference of the previous work and this work is um, the previous work finds such structured polynomial from the existing algorithms in numerical analysis, while we design such structured polynomial ourselves by capturing some core properties in mathematical perspective. Now let's go into some more details of our work. The core idea of our work actually came out from the observation and, and reinterpretation on the previ previous work. Um, by capturing that the composite polynomial can be interpreted as an iterative algorithm in algorithmic perspective, the main idea of the previous work was to express the comparison function as a rational function approximation and then apply the well-known iterative algorithms for division. More precisely, the rational function in the red box was evaluated by iterative computations of a square over a square plus b square, which we call kind of uh, squaring and normalization process. So in this work, uh, we tried to reinterpret the iterative algorithm in the previous work into the perspective of uh, the polynomial composition rather than iterative algorithm itself. That is, um, the squaring and normalization process can be regarded as an evalu evaluation of the rational function f0, which is defined as x square over x square plus 1 minus x square. Then, the algorithm is actually uh, the composition of F0, and we could rephrase the goal of this approach as 
uh, to compose the function f0 to make it get close to the step function. So here is the graph of the f0 composition. Uh, firstly, the red line is f0, which looks like somewhat symmetric and it's kind of wavy function which has some uh, concavity and convexity in some in each interval and the green line is two times composition of f0 and the purple line is three times composition of f0 so you can see that the function gets close to the uh, step function as the number of composition increase and here after looking into the graph we realize that Oh, there is no reason for the basic function of the composition to be this kind of rational function f0, which requires very expensive division operation. Instead, uh, instead of the specific formula for f0, we may need some other properties, for example, symmetry and convexity and some other things, things may be enough. So, uh, now we came to the um, we we came to the following question: What are the core properties of f, which makes its composition uh, get close to the sine function? Here we simply think of the sine function because the step function described before and the sine function and the comparison function are actually computationally equivalent. So what it means is that if we you, if we compute one, then we can also compute another one. So uh, we simply thought of the sine function. And from this observation, we try to find the core properties of the basic function f as following. Uh, here, I would like to note that since we are dealing with uh, polynomial approximation, we must set the domain for the approximation, which is actually inevitable. And for the simplicity, we set the domain to be minus 1, 1 interval. So we are looking for the polynomial approximation over minus 1, 1 interval. Um, the first core property is uh, for the symmetry, which is quite natural because the sine function also has this kind of property. And the second one is necessary to ensure the pointwise convergence to the sine function, which means that um, if f1 is not uh, is not equal to 1, then the composition of f will not converge to the sine function in pointwise sense. And the third one is uh, actually the optional one, and this property is to accelerate the convergence by making the function f as flat as possible at plus minus 1. So with these properties, the basic function f is uniquely determined for each degree n uh, 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 sorry, 2n plus 1 as the given formula, uh, which is denoted by fn. So this is the graph of the composition of fn. Um, as you can see in the left side graph, uh, for example, since f3 has larger degree than f1, uh, the f3 polynomial is more flat than f1 at plus minus 1 point, which means uh, the composition of F3 would converge much faster than, than that of F1. And in the right side a graph, um, we can check that the function gets close to the sine function as the number of composition increase. And you can see that um, this graph looks very similar to the previous graph on the previous slide uh, uh, for the composition of F0. But the main difference is our fn polynomial is actually polynomial, carefully, uh, which are carefully devised by several core properties, while the f0 of the previous work is uh, a rational function, which just came out from existing formula and algorithm, and uh, its computation is quite expensive because of the division process. This is the theorem for the convergence of the composition of fn to the sine function. That is, um, if it's at the number of compositions larger than some value, then we can theoretically guarantee that the composition of fn is very close to the sine function uh, with this kind of measure uh, with parameter epsilon and alpha. Um, in terms of epsilon and alpha, we can express the goal of uh, the fn composition as 
um, to make an input which is very small as epsilon uh, to be very close to plus minus one with alpha bit precision. One interesting point is that we can actually separate the goal into two different goals. So the first goal is to raise an epsilon size input to just a constant level rather than put it very close to plus minus one, just to a constant level. And the first goal actually corresponds to the first red box. And the second goal is to make the constant to be very uh, close to plus minus one with alphabet precision. And this second goal actually corresponds to the second red box. So after splitting the goal, we observe that several core properties of Fn fits very well for the second goal, but not for the first goal. For example, the core property of 2 is for the pointwise convergence to plus minus 1, and the core property of 3 was to accelerate the convergence. However, the first goal, which aims to put epsilon size input to just a constant level, does not need the convergence to plus minus 1 at all. And actually, this is uh, the second goal. So our idea here is to construct another polynomial g, which is devised only for the first goal, and replace the pure f composition by the mixed composition of g and f. So we set a new core property 4, uh, which we will not describe in this talk, but uh, we replaced a core property 2 and 3 in fn by a new core property 4 for uh, gm polynomial, and successfully constructed the GM polynomials. So for more details on the construction of G polynomials and uh, its efficiency, please refer to our full paper. Okay, uh, this is the graph of G polynomials and we can easily check that GN looks quite different to previous FN polynomials. For example, GN is not flat at plus minus one, but it is much steeper than Fn at zero point, so it shows much better performance for our first goal, but they cannot purely used for the second goal. And the right side graph shows a toy example of the comparison of pure Fn composition and mixed composition of Gn and Fn. So it um, experimentally also, also experimentally shows that uh, the mixed composition uh, shows better convergence rather than just pure composition of Fn. Now we'll present some uh, result of our work. So from the concrete analysis, we showed that our new comparison algorithms show the optimal asymptotic complexity among all approximate polynomial evaluation of the sine function within the same measure uh, determined by epsilon and alpha. So, as you can see, our method show logarithmic complexity compared to the minimax approximation method and even much smaller than the previous work. And our new comparison method also shows quite nice performance in practice. Um, we implemented our method on the hand library, which is an implementation of the approximate H schemes called CKKS. And as you can see, in amortized running time sense, our accelerate method shows about one millisecond uh, for a comparison of uh, 20, bit, uh, 20 bit integers. And this is a comparable result to the bitwise comparison methods based on, based on TFHE. And even in latency, while the previous method required only, uh, required more than 40 minutes to compare uh, 20 bit integers within uh, 20 bit alpha precision, our method only requires one and a half minute, which is about 30 times faster result compared to the previous result, previous uh, method. Before the end of my talk, I would like to share some interesting further works and open questions we may think of in this line of works. Firstly, uh, as a follow up study of this work, we believe it is very important to provide a strategy to the choice of n. Here, n means that um, fn and gn polynomials denotes 2n plus 1 degree polynomial we devised. I mean, 
In this talk, uh, we introduced family of polynomials fn and gn for each n, and their compositions achieve uh, asymptotically optimal complexity for sine function approximation. But we haven't discussed which n is the best choice. But this question is not that simple because the computational cost in HE is not purely determined by the number of multiplications, but also the depth of the target circuit. And the cost model cannot be uniquely determined and defined and determined because it varies for each situation and applications. So classifying the cost model of FHE uh, of HE and providing the best choice of N for each, each situation would be an important step for this work. And the second one is the analysis on our G polynomials actually includes some heuristic parts in proving the convergence rate of mixed composition of F and G to the sine function. So it is another open question to be solved. And lastly, we believe the following open question would be a very worthwhile and interesting topic. So in the current state, regardless of the choice of the H scheme, we are able to do both polynomial evaluation and um, comparison operation uh, regardless of the efficiency. Uh, however, one fundamental limitation is some operations are built upon the other basic operations so that they cannot be super efficient as we want it. For example, in world worldwide HE schemes, uh, as done in our work, we achieve the homomorphic comparison through the polynomial evaluation. And in bitwise HE schemes, uh, they achieve the homomorphic polynomial evaluation by assembling logical gate operations. So, I think it, it would be a very big step if we could get out of, get out from this framework. So proposing uh, proposing new comparison algorithm without polynomial representation framework would be one option. And the other option would be to construct a totally new HE scheme, which support both polynomial and logical operation as basic operations. This is the end of my talk and thank you for listening and watching.